Nehemiah chapter 10. We're going to start at verse uh, 2032. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 32. If you have a say amen. amen. If you do not have a say, hold up, Pastor. Amen. Last time I checked, it was still in the Bible. Amen. If you don't know where it is, turn to the front, to the table of contents. It will assist you to get on the page that the rest of the con congregation has found. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Because that person next to you might be flipping pages also. Boy. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 32. Look what the Bible says. Also, he made ordinances for us to chain, to charge ourselves here with the third part of the shekel for the service of the house of our God. For the showbread and for the continued meat offering and for the continued burnt offering of the Sabbaths, of the new moons, for the set feasts, and for the holy things, and for the sin offering to make an atonement for Israel, and for all the work of the house of God. And we cast uh, the lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our God. At the houses uh, of our Father, at times appointed year by year, to burn upon the altar of the Lord our God, as it is written in the law. Verse 35. And to bring the first fruits of the ground of our ground, and the first fruits of all the fruits of all trees, year by year, unto the house of the Lord. 36. And also the first born of our sons, and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, the first things of our herds, of our flock to bring to the house of our God unto the priests that minister in the house of our God and that they and that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings and the fruit of all the manner of all trees of wine and of oil and unto the priests, to the chambers of the house of God, and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all cities of our, of our tillage. Verse 38 says, And the priests, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithes and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithe the, unto the house of God to the chambers into the treasure house. And now last verse. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offerings of the corn of the new wine and the oil unto the chambers where are the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests, the man and the minister and the porters and the singers and we will not forsake the house of God. If some of y'all were really looking on closely, it kept mentioning the house of God. Of God. Can I get a witness here? Amen. So we if we if we're gonna talk about the house of God, we have got to make a commitment. Mm -hmm. The message today, make a 
commitment. That's it. Repeat that. Make, make, make a, a, a commitment. commitment. The author of the book of Nehemiah, the author is really not, is really unknown. But there are some scholars, saints of God, that believe that the prophet Ezra wrote the book of Nehemiah. And other scholars believe that Nehemiah penned the book which bears his name, Nehemiah. Mm. Nehemiah means, saints of God, the Lord of comfort, mm. or Yahweh has comforted blank period in the story, amen? Looking at the text, we discover what's taking place in the life of the Jewish people and the, which were the Israel, Israelites and Nehemiah. Mm. Nehemiah, says of God, is the cupbearer of the king of Persia, that's right, that's right. Xerxes. Nehemiah receives word that Jerusalem is completely destroyed and that the walls of the city have been destroyed as well. And Nehemiah, the king's cupbearer, caught the attention of the king by looking so sad and, and feeling so bad because Jerusalem had been destroyed. Right. And therefore, Nehemiah spoke to the king, being the cupbearer, remember, saints of God, is during these times, no one approaches the king unless he's been requested to come. Right. But being a cupbearer, some may not know what a cupbearer is, so I'm going to tell you, the cupbearer, saints of God, is responsible for tasting the wine or any beverage that the king has to drink. He takes it first, tastes it, and if he don't die, it's, no, it's not poison. <laughs> Amen. Because during that time, saints of God, a lot of kings were poisoned. So that's why we have a cup bearer. Amen. You want to try this? Hey, uh, uh, uh. All right. Wait, get out of the church. All right. <laughs> to make a long story short, Nehemiah was concerned about the walls of Jerusalem that were burned down. How many of us up in here know what the walls symbolize? A wall symbolizes strength. Mm. The wall symbolizes protection. Whenever you decide to rebuild or strengthen your life through the word of God, forces will immediately rise up against you from within yourself and outside of yourself. And, the, and this force is trying to get you to resist doing God's will. And it's trying to get you to stop doing what God has assigned for you to do. <laughs> Amen, somebody. But the Bible says, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is found in chapter 8 of Nehemiah where we see a celebration taking place which is called the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks, saints of God, it commemorated the 40 years of Israel walking around in the wilderness. Mm. Uh, they built booths where they would go in and worship Yahweh Jehovah God. They publicly read the word of God and revival began to take place throughout the landscape. And now, saints of God, the Israelite people were being released from captivity from the captives, which is Babylon, and today we call that Iran. Amen? Amen. It's in the ninth chapter of Nehemiah where we read that the Israelites assembled themselves together, and they began to fast, they begin to pray, prostrating themselves on the ground. 
And saints of God, the Israelites began to confess their sins and confess the iniquities of their fathers that were before them. They began to repent and separate themselves from all foreign individuals. So how many of us, saints of God, how many of us up in here know that there are some things that occur in our life that only God can solve? Amen. That's it. That's it. Amen. That's it. We'll pick up the telephone and call sister girl and brother man, but never go to their knees and call on the one who has the answer That's it. for all of our problems. That's it. That's can I get a witness here today? The nation of Israel decided to uh, rededicate itself to the reading of the book of the law. The book of law is the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. What is the first, I mean, the first five books of the Bible, and the Jews realized that the Spirit of God convicted them and spoke, and the spoken word of God convinced them. Mm -hmm. So we have the word of God, we read it, it convicts us. And when the preacher or someone speaks that word, it convinces us that God is still in charge. That's it, right? When the spirit convicts you, and the prophetic word convinces you, uh -huh. something on the inside tells you that you've got to change. Yeah. 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 It's just like when we come to Jesus. The songwriter said, when we come, we come weary, wounded, and sad. But we have found a resting place, saints of God, in Him, and He will make us glad. Amen, somebody. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 38 says, in view of all of this, what we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are attaching their seal unto it. In other words, saints of God, these people realized that their life needed to change because of the things they were doing in the sight of God. Sort of like saints of God when we have Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. When Mardi Gras comes to this city, mm -hmm. oh, saints of God, <laughs> you ought to know. I see it on Facebook all the time. They drop it like it's hot. They be backing that thing up. They miss somebody. They're second lining and doing everything that's ungodly. And then, saints of God, they got the nerve, the God, on Wednesday, which is the next day, to go run to the altar and get a little black powder or dirt on their head, believing that they have been able to repent. Thank God, thank God for grace and mercy. Because once you have confessed your sins, amen, and it's him that is faithful to uh, remove sin. And saints of God, what well, we got to always know and understand that if it had not been for God, that's it, God. who's on our side, it, where would we be today? Saints of God, uh, 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 what well, we need to understand in the text that the leaders of this area, Judah, the leaders, and it was uh, several people in this thing, it was like 84 individuals. And if you read Saints of God, chapter 10, verses 1 through 27, there is a list of names. Yeah. Those names, saints of God, represent the leaders of that area. And that area is 
called the kingdom of Judah. Mm. All right? And so those individuals signed a document. Sort of like us, what we do. Mm -hmm. And when we say, Lord, ha, if you just get me out of this one, Amen. I'm going to change mm -hmm. and do what's right. Lord, if you get me away from this knucklehead, Okay. Amen, somebody. Okay. I'm going to do what's right. Amen. Lord, anyway that you bless me, I'm going to be satisfied. Amen. But saints of God, we've got to understand when we sign that declaration that God is not to be played with. Go ahead. Oh, it's getting tight. Yeah. It's showing up right. Amen. Right. And so, saints of God, uh, uh, what did these people agree upon? Mm. If you see the name, there are 84 of them listed. Amen. And these people came to an agreement that they would not, uh, uh, they would separate themselves from ungodly individuals. Mm. Uh, how many of y'all know some ungodly individuals? Oh, I see some hands didn't go up. So apparently, everybody that you come in contact is righteous. Huh? There ain't no sin, ain't no shame in them. Okay, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm go for a survey. How many of us know some ungodly people? Okay, I see more hands now. Yeah, y'all in the house of prayer, so please tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen, somebody. And so, what we see, saints of God, that you have to separate yourself. I remember Deacon Harris saying this. You have to come out from among them. Be ye separate from the unholy. Touch not the unclean thing. Amen, somebody. So we see, saints of God, that there must be a commitment to submission. That's the first thing. They entered into an oath, which is very serious. When we give an oath, we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Right. I don't know if the kids still say that, but that's an oath that you agree that we pledge into this flag which represents the United States of America. Right. Can I get a witness here today? And so what we do behind that oath is that we're not going to do anything to uh, criticize or put down or make shame of the United States. Right. Can I get a witness here today? But if we are to walk and obey in God's law, that oath, sense of God, is a solemn obligation of a duty which is individuals or individuals vow to perform. In other words, we have made a vow that we are going to do this and that or the other. Mm -hmm. But, saints of God, the observance to do all the commandments of the law, and also we're going to adhere to his judgments and his statutes. And if we do not obey that, it's in the text. Mm -hmm. we, are being, we will be cursed We've agreed to that. Yeah. A curse is the penalty which is invoked if they do not keep their promise by committing to the covenant. How many of us know that next Sunday is the first Sunday of March? Uh -huh. And, saints of God, we are going to read the covenant. That's it. And when we read the covenant, we need to pay close attention of what we have agreed to. Mm -hmm. There is a little part in there saying that we are going to have family worship and devotion. Right. Don't put your hand up. We know how y'all are doing it. All right, and there is also in there, uh, uh, Deacon Carol, I want you to hear this. There is also in there a text that says that we will not drink. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. We all remember that. He remembers. Amen. <laughs> but say to God, if you remember when you said, uh, uh, Lord, I'm going to do this, Lord, I'm going to do that, because what we are saying is, if I don't do it, Lord, you got the right to curse me. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I thank God for God's grace mm -hmm. and his mercy. That's it. Because by us all falling short of the glory of God, we make some mistakes. Can I get a witness here today? And when we make mistakes, we can go boldly to the throne of grace. And saints of God, one thing I want to say to you all, if you have a pen or a pencil, get a crayon and write this down. Matthew chapter 5, verse 34 through 37. This is how serious God is about making promises. And if you make a promise or a commitment, you got to keep it. Look what the Bible says. But I say unto you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is his city of the great king, nor shall ye swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or one hair black. But let your yes be yes, and your nay be nay. For what uh, whosoever is more than these is from the evil one. That's right. Saints of God, we have a right to make a commitment. But God said, if you make a commitment, then you need to stick to your promise. Boy, boy. Nehemiah 10 and 30 says, and this is what we see, the commitment concerning separation. Yeah. Now, in the text, we are reading six or, or three or four promises uh, that God people make unto the law. They promised that they would not allow their sons and daughters to marry heathen men uh -huh. and heathen women. Yes. In other words, saints of God, they have made a decision. They've signed this document. And once this document is signed, they will adhere to the document. Mm -hmm. Saints of God, we made a signature spiritually when we said, for God I live, oh, <laughs> and for God I shall not die. That's it. They miss somebody. And I, it just reminds me of something that took place last week. Yes. 21 Egyptians mm. who were Christian yes. right. were beheaded yes. right. by this group called ISIS. Mm. And saints of God, they say that in that time when they were having their heads severed, many of them said, Jesus, take care of us. Boy, yeah. Jesus! We know you can handle what we going through. But saints of God, we've got to realize that sometimes God allows things to happen so the ones who are left that we'll jump on board. He meant somebody if they have truly repent and accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, my Bible says that they are absent from the body and they are present with the Lord. He alright. He meant somebody. And what we have to understand also in our commitment, we have a commitment of separation and we have a commitment to faithfully honor the Sabbath day. Now, saints of God, the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. How many of us know that the Sabbath begins Friday night when the sun goes down? And it ends that Saturday night when the sun goes down. That is the Sabbath day. Saints of God, we have not changed the Sabbath. <laughs> we do not have the right to change the Sabbath. But we worship because God, Jesus, got up on the third day morning, which was early one Sunday morning. And so saints of God, the Bible says in Revelation 1 and uh, 10, it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. 
Yeah. And saints of God, we've got to know and understand that every day yeah. is it's the Lord's day. day. Yeah. Acts 20 and 7 said, and upon the first day of the week, yeah. when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. Yeah. In other words, on the first day of the week, oh, yeah. they went and they worshiped and they had prayer and uh, the man of God preached yes, the gospel. Oh, yeah. I like what Jesus said yeah. in Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Look what he said. The Sabbath was made for man mm -hmm. and not man yeah. for the Sabbath. Yeah. Right. Therefore, the Son of Man is the Lord also of the Sabbath. Right. So that's why I am always saying, Thank you for grace. Well, and thank you for mercy. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. if we are worshiping in error, oh, yeah. we cannot out sin whatever God's grace and mercy is. Right. But I just have it, the right thing in my mind yeah. that every day, every, every day, on, it's a Lord's day. Yeah. And so I don't see no error within this ministry that we are worshiping on the Sabbath day. Yeah. So saints of God, when Jesus got up mm. on that Sunday morning, yeah. we worship. Oh, yeah. And also saints of God, this is why we worship on Sunday. Mm. It's because when the Holy Spirit was given to the congregation, yeah. way back when they sat and had things in common mm -hmm. on that day in the upper room. Yes, it was on the first day of the week. Yeah. And so we celebrate Jesus getting up. Boy. We celebrate the Holy Spirit indwelling within us. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. So we faithfully commit to God. Oh, yeah. And we faithfully commit to separation. Mm -hmm. And saints of God, finally, we commit to take care and provide for God's temple. Come on, God. The Bible says that we honor God with our finances by bringing our tithes into the storehouse. Right. Oh, yeah. To honor God with our finances oh, yeah. means that we are to bring our tithes and our offerings mm -hmm. into the storehouse. That's it. Saints of God, when you decide to give to God, He has an agent, which is called the church. And the Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. So when you bring it to this agent, He put the pastor and the deacons in charge of that business. Right. That we always be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Right. That's why you can't play with God's money. You can't play when God wants your time. You can't play when you just say, I'm going to stay home in the bed. I won't make it this Sunday. There's another Sunday coming around. I'll catch up. But saints of God, what would happen if Jesus would part the sky? Come on, son. Because he said that he's coming back oh, yeah. for a church yeah. without a spot oh, yeah. or a wrinkle or a blemish. Oh, yeah. But I like what he said. Yeah. Bring the time oh, yeah. and the offering yes, to the storehouse oh, yeah. right. that there may be me <laughs> in my house. Yeah. Prove me. He went, said the Lord of hosts. That's why, saints of God, as I get ready to go to my seat, we've got to make a commitment. A commitment is an agreement. A commitment is a pledge to do something in the future, oh, yeah. or at the moment you have been obligated. Yeah. But people today, they don't want to obligate themselves to any cause. I found out that if you obligate yourself to the will and the ways of God, that whenever you make this commitment that you should not make a promise that you can't keep. Amen. 
That's it. Make a commitment. Yeah. If you're not married, to live in the image mm -hmm. and the ways of our God. Boy. Boy. Can I get a witness here? Oh yeah. One thing uh, that I found out oh, yeah. that when you make a commitment, yeah. Oh, yeah. I found out that the commitment means that you are obligated yeah. to do what God has entrusted you.
Yeah,